the superior Spider-Man. The Amazing Spider-Man is one of the most beloved superheroes to ever be created by Marvel Comics. People have appreciated the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man in various avatars throughout the years. We have seen evil versions of Spider-Man, like Blood Spider and the Six-Armed Spider Doppelganger. There are other instances where genetic replicates of Spider-Man like Ben Riley and Kane Parker have used the alias of Scarlet Spider. There is also the instance where Peter Parker merged with the symbiote called Venom. Then there is the superior Spider-Man, who we come across in Amazing Spider-Man issue number 700, Dying Wish, where Dr. Octopus transfers his consciousness into Peter Parker's body. This gives us an enigmatic version of Spider-Man, who wants to do the right thing, but often ends up resorting to his evil ways in a typical anti-hero fashion. Before we go on to our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Origins Dr. Otto Octavius, best known as the criminal mastermind Dr. Octopus, is a brilliant and arrogant scientist. Octavius's body was linked to four mechanical, tentacle-like limbs during an atomic research experiment that went wrong, giving him serious brain damage and turning him into a criminal. He had a run-in with Spider-Man and became one of his most vehement foes. Otto's body began to deteriorate and degrade after several conflicts. Otto exchanged minds with his foe in one final bid to survive, leaving Spider-Man to perish in his frail body. However, Otto's leftover memories made him realize the importance of being a hero, and he set out to become the superior Spider-Man a stronger crime fighter than his arch nemesis. In issue 700, we come across Doc Ock trying to use the memories of Peter to get back with Mary Jane. But since he only resembles Peter physically, he acts with MJ in a way Peter never would have, which surprises MJ to say the least. They are suddenly forced to stop their ordeal when Doc Ock realizes that Peter has made an escape from the raft, a maximum security prison meant to house the superhuman criminals. Peter manages to escape the inescapable prison using one of Doc Ock's escape plans with the help of the trapster, Hydro Man and the Scorpion. Meanwhile, we see Doc Ock boarding a flight to Belgium. When Peter regains his senses, he is amidst three other villains in one of Dr. Octopus's secret lairs, and he realizes he wasn't dreaming, but was actually trapped in Doc Ock's body. The trapster tries to hook Peter to Doc Ock's old mechanical arms, and meanwhile, Peter contemplates in his battered state whether he would have done the job better since the trapster is not capable of matching his intellectual capabilities. While the trapster tries to initiate the process, Peter points out a few mistakes in his calculations and asks him to fix them. But before he could point out another mistake, the trapster initiates the process and everyone is blinded by a huge bolt of electricity. This led to the Hydro Man and Scorpion arguing with Trapster as he failed to do what was asked of him. Meanwhile, Peter regains consciousness in what seems to be his old body but is teleported to Forest Hills Ingram Street, but in a different setting, where he is first greeted by Tim Harrison, who tells him that he would love it there, and then he comes across Alexi and Oksana, who tell him that he wouldn't ever feel pain again, but only love there. Peter realizes that all of them are dead, and just when he is about to contemplate whether he is in the afterlife, his thoughts are constrained by Sable, who exclaims upon seeing him and says that he was too early, and had failed her as she sacrificed herself, so that he could save everyone. But then Peter reassures her that they won. Sable, however, points out that he is only there because of the moral constraints that barred him from killing Dr. Octopus when he should have and would never be in the situation otherwise. But then a hand reaches out to his shoulder, assuring him that what he did was absolutely right and killing would have been against the very essence of Spider-Man. The man who spoke these words of wisdom was none other than Captain Stacy, the former chief of the NYPD, accompanied by his daughter, Gwen. Peter tries to apologize for failing them and letting their sacrifice go in vain, to which Captain Stacy reassures him that he didn't deviate from his path of morality, and that's what matters most. Peter also comes across Marla, who asks him to have a word with his parents who are elated on meeting their son after so many years and reinstate their views by telling him how they witnessed all his accomplishments. They are interrupted by Uncle Ben, who asks everyone not to spoil him with all their compliments. Uncle Ben tells Peter that he needs to go, because he can't let Dr. Octopus be the Spider-Man instead of him, and he can rest once this is all over. Peter regains his consciousness in the mortal world as Doc Ock and plans to charge at the authorities. Meanwhile, Mayor Jameson is trying to ascertain the damage and vows to the press that the authorities will catch him at the earliest. Doc Ock comes across Jameson, calling him a loser and decides to stay back while Peter has broken into the 18th precinct. 
to retrieve Doc Ock's gold Octobot with the three other villains whom he asks not to kill any officers so as to avoid the attention of the Avengers. Meanwhile, Peter tries to stop Charlie, but instead, she gets injured trying to stop them. Doc Ock, disguised as Spider-Man, manages to gather all of his loved ones under one roof. He then hacks into Peter's old comm system to tell him what he has done, while also pulling the self-destruction lever to destroy his hideout. Peter calls his bluff, but then Doc tells him that he has informed the cops of his secret headquarters, where Peter is hiding. Peter and the other three start getting shelled by the cops, and Peter asks Scorpion and Hydro Man to take care of them, but not by killing anyone. Meanwhile, Trapster figures out that Peter is making a brain swapping device, and assumes that he wanted to swap his brain into the Trapster's body, so he attacks Peter, but Peter instead traps him with the help of his glue guns, and escapes with the other two in a submarine. After that, we see everyone Doc Ock had kept in Spider-Man's safe house talking amongst themselves, while MJ approaches Spider-Man in a different room and confesses her love for him. After a narrow escape, we see Peter breaking into the Avengers Tower while shocking Scorpion and Hydro Man, whom he had previously asked not to harm people specifically to avoid the Avengers. Peter on the other hand believes if he hands over the Octobot to anyone like Iron Man, Beast, or Giant Man, they would figure out that it is a brain swapping device, since the Trapster too was able to figure it out with his subpar intellect. Peter doesn't find anyone. Meanwhile, Doc Ock shows up as Spider-Man to fight them and engages with Peter. During this, the Scorpion and Hydro Man figure out that Jameson is inside the tower and go after him. Doc Ock as Spider-Man bids adieu to Peter and goes to save Jameson and all his loved ones in an attempt to replicate what Spider-Man would have done. The Hydro Man gets captured when he tries to attack the Jamesons with the extractor used to capture Sandman. Then the Scorpion breaks in and while he is occupied with Jonah, Robbie helps the others escape. Doc Ock shows up to fight Scorpion and rips his jaw apart with sheer brutality that the real Spider-Man would have never resorted to. Peter shows up that very next moment and he is enraged with Doc as he used his hands to deliver such a brutal blow to Gargan and squeezes Doc Ock with his tentacles, but then the Doc uses impact webbing on the people who are trying to escape so as to loosen Peter's grip on them. Peter in his one last attempt jumps out of the window to end both of their lives, but Doc Ock manages to save them by making a web shield to cushion their fall. Peter tries to use the Octobot to switch his body, but the Doc had already coated his cranium with carbonadium rendering the Octobot useless to swap their minds, but instead, it connected them. In his final moments, Peter tells Otto what it is to be Spider-Man, and that the memories they now both share will tell him why Spider-Man does what he does. Otto realizes that after everything he had done, Peter had saved him as well. Peter repeats the iconic line one last time, with great power must come great responsibility, before drawing his last breath in front of Otto, who was now Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man. Becoming the Superior Spider-Man The lore of the Superior Spider-Man continues in the standalone Superior Spider-Man comic books published by Marvel Comic Books between January 2013 and September 2014. Otto Octavius succeeded Peter Parker as Superior Spider-Man after his death. After updating the spider suit with computerized optics, one of his first tasks was to break into an old base he had set up during his tenure as Dr. Octopus. The base's defenses recognized him as an invader since they were key to his original DNA which he no longer had owing to the body swap. During this fight, he realized that no matter how bright he thought he was, Peter Parker always beat him. Otto departed the base after destroying his inventions and accepted his new job as Spider-Man, wholeheartedly. Octavius decided to become more efficient after defeating the new Sinister Six and the returned Vulture, as many of Peter's friends started noticing changes in Peter's behavior. Otto also enrolled in Empire State University to get his, Peter's, doctorate. As Peter, he met Anna Maria Marconi, who offered to tutor him. Otto was at first upset with her for believing that he needed the help, but Anna not only amazed Otto with her intelligence, but he also found himself falling in love with her, sentiments that the young woman shared. Otto smashed Scorpion's jaw, blinded the vulture, and murdered the mass murderer massacre during his stint as Spider-Man. He also did a number of unintentional deeds, such as stopping himself from murdering Boomerang. When the Avengers tried to figure out why the Spider-Man had changed his behavior, they didn't uncover anything. Otto sought to utilize a neurological scanner to figure out what was causing all the spasms in his body, which Dr. Elias Wortham, alias Cardiac, also required. Otto could take the scanner with him once he consented to assist Cardiac in surgery. Peter Parker almost blocked Otto from completing his operation on an injured small girl, which would have had enormous ramifications because he was afraid of his own discovery. Otto noticed a peculiar aberration in his brain after requiring the scanner 
and he knew it was Peter. Otto discovered that Peter's awareness was still active in his brain, and to his surprise, he could now hear Peter within his thoughts, prompting him to put an end to this for good. Otto began a mind wipe with the use of a neurolytic scanner, and after interacting with Parker personally, he was able to wipe him out delving into his brain. In that split second of surgery, when Peter was completely selfish, Otto had the ability to persuade Peter of his own supremacy, and Peter Parker was finally gone, or so Otto believed. Following Parker's expulsion, Octavius assisted Mayor Jameson in the murder of Alistair Smythe, and despite Smythe's temporary control of the raft, Otto defeated his friends, Vulture, Boomerang, and Scorpion, and killed the villain, covertly kidnapping the Vulture. During the confrontation, Jameson ordered Spider-Man to murder Smythe. Using this proof to blackmail Jameson, Spider-Man compelled the mayor to allow the raft to become his new headquarters, called Spider Island 2. Octavius recruited his own squad of minions, the Spiderlings, and constructed huge spider mechs, one of Otto's newest methods as he decided to bring about the annihilation of Shadowland. Unbeknownst to him, a new organized criminal gang was forming under the leadership of the Goblin King. Powers of the Superior Spider-Man As Superior Spider-Man, Otto claimed to have the same powers as Spider-Man, which included his superhuman strength, endurance, agility, durability, speed, the ability to crawl on walls, and to achieve superhuman equilibrium instinctively. Otto also imbibed Peter's containment immunity that enabled him to recover from drugs and diseases faster than normal due to his superior metabolism. He had a regenerative healing that enabled him to recover from broken bones, albeit not as powerful as Wolverine. And last but not least, he also had the spider sense, which, in combination with his superhuman kinesthetics, enabled him to avoid most injuries unless he cognitively overrode his automatic reflexes. It also warned him of potential immediate threats by manifesting a tingling sensation in the back of his skull. It's unclear what this sensation feels like. It appears to be a simultaneous clairvoyant reaction to a wide range of occurrences that provided a several hundredths of a second long warning, which was enough time for his reflexes to allow him to avoid damage. The feeling can also elicit a broad response, lasting many minutes, if he is unable to determine the nature of the threat. The Superior Spider-Man also uses much of the Amazing Spider-Man's tech, albeit with a few add-ons. He uses the same web shooters and web fluid as the Amazing Spider-Man, and also the same utility belt to store the web fluid and spider signal. As for upgrades, he uses sharp retractable talons in his hands and feet, and also uses computerized lenses with heads-up display. Based on his Octobots, he developed Spider-Bots that enable him to keep an eye on New York City. He also uses Arachnots in combat which are much bigger in size than Spider-Bots for mobility and assistance. Why is Superior Spider-Man better? Even though a lot of people might argue that Superior Spider-Man was nothing like the Amazing Spider-Man, barring his suit, in many ways, he was similar, especially when it came to the responsibilities of Spider-Man. Otto tried his best to fulfill them but sometimes he did the job better than even Peter Parker when it came to employing more technology. His sheer brutality in combat gave Spider-Man an anti-hero flair, which was quite refreshing. Amazing Spider-Man fans might love the superior version, or hate it, but it cannot be denied that Otto as Spider-Man was a force to be reckoned with. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone.